We're here uh, at uh, Sheridan's uh, with uh, Tahir Bashir, so we continue our series uh, uh, of uh, segments. Uh, hi Tahir and thanks for joining me on the show, how's it going today? Uh, really good, really good. Thanks as always for having me. So today we're going to talk about artists and brands, so I think it's something that uh, both artists and brands and labels that work within the music industry are going to be very interested in. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, like a sort of a one-on-one segment, uh, talking about the, the generics. So first of all, what are brands looking for uh, in an artist when they're looking to hook up, hook up with, a, with a musician? Ultimately, a brand will want to hook up with an artist that fits the brand's values. So if you're an edgy artist, an edgy brand is going to be looking for you. Um, if you're a youth-oriented you know, oriented act, then uh, brands that are trying to get to that 16 to 25 demographic yeah. uh, are going to be looking at you. And that's a you know, traditionally very difficult uh, bracket to reach out to. Um, and so music is a great way for them to kind of get through to them. Yeah, and you're talking about the demographics, so how important is the social media presence of an artist uh, to sort of support uh, the level of uh, exposure they can give to a brand? It's really important. Uh, quite often brands find specific artists around the, you know, looking at the social media criteria. Right. If you think about it from the brand's perspective, brands are moving a lot of their budgets from traditional media to social media. So. Once again, it comes back to that fit with the brand. So they need to find an artist that has that social media presence because ultimately they're pushing their budgets to social media. So yeah. social media is really important and increasingly will become more important. Looking at the range of commitments that uh, artists can expect a brand to ask for and vice versa that a brand might want to ask for from an artist, uh, what kind of things are we looking at here? Like there's so many different things that can happen in that relationship. Yeah, from from commitment perspective, I mean, it depends on who I'm acting for. When I'm acting for the brand, I try and keep the the, the <laughs> talent fee as low as possible and the commitments from the talent high as, as high as possible. And similarly, <laughs> when you're acting for the artist, you're doing the opposite, trying to get as much money for as little commitment. Yeah. If you think about somebody like a David Beckham, for example, you know the day is already filled out for him months in advance. So for a brand to come and expect lots of effectively time commitment um, will cost them money because ultimately it's opportunity cost in other areas. So uh, commitments really depends on budgets, depends on level of artist, and also depends on the amount of exposure the artist wants to have with that brand. Yeah. So if it's a long running campaign, to take a, you know, this is out of music, but take a Gary Lineker with Walker's Crisps, um, you know, that's been years he's been associated with that brand but they're paying for that and he is very associated with it so it has its own opportunity costs. Yeah, sure. Looking at uh, uh, the way in which uh, uh, brands deal with uh, artists' personal life as well, that's, that's an interesting side as well because of course uh, there's, there's always stories uh, when there's a scandal of uh, any kind of brands trying to disassociate themselves from, from the artist. So how important is that side and, and, uh, and how, do, how do, have you seen uh, artists and brands deal with that relationship with things, when things go wrong? It's called crisis management, <laughs> and we get involved in it quite a lot. Um, yeah, it comes back to, you know, from my perspective, it comes back to everybody going into a relationship with open eyes, ultimately. Right. You know, if you're trying to get um, uh, an artist that is maybe a bit off the rails to be associated with your brand because you effectively want that kind of culty edginess, then you have to expect that there might be some issues later on down the line. Yeah. Um, equally, from an artist's perspective, you know, we're very at pains to make sure the artist understands, and it's not just the one brand deal, particularly with you know, high level artists, they'll have a whole matrix of different deals. Right. And so you need to be, you know, they need to know you know, and it's not just about their behavior, it's about, you know, what products they wear, for example. So if, you know, we act for models as well, and if they're carrying one brand uh, and they're the face of another, that doesn't go down particularly well. Yeah. So a lot of it is about just being transparent and everybody being aware about, you know, that, that, that line as to what they can do and what they can't do. Um, but from our perspective, it's about getting it right in the first place. And then when things go wrong, it's about trying to... Uh, alleviate the tension around that and a lot of that will be working with good PR as well to make sure that you know a story which might be seen as scandalous can be um, dealt with in the appropriate manner. That's great. Well thank you so much and in the next segment we're going to talk about uh, potential expectations from uh, music and brand deals and the different types of deals as well so uh, till the next uh, time. Thank you very much.